Reaper Farm recently got hacked for 1.7 million and this is a CTF challenge where we go back in time and recreate the scenario to see if we can hack it ourselves and try to learn a bit of smart contract security. It's a pretty cool concept for a CTF. I actually uh, forked this from the original repo here, which had some issues with compiling because it didn't have the libraries. So I fixed it in my version of the repo here, which you can use instead, but it may have been intentional from the author for you to troubleshoot your way through that, um, just to learn a bit more about Foundry. So if you want to uh, play around with Foundry, then clone the original repo. If you don't want to mess around with compilation issues, which is always the most annoying thing when you're setting up a new testing environment, go ahead and clone my repo here and we'll jump in and solve this challenge. Um, I'll start from the very beginning from installing Foundry itself. So to install the Foundry framework, uh, go to this Foundry repo here and run this bash script to install. So go ahead and open up a terminal and run that command. Once that's done, close and reopen the terminal and then run foundry up. So now we go foundry up and that will install foundry. And it may take some time depending on how fast it downloads. So go ahead and just wait until that completes and then you can clone this repo to start to play around with this CTF challenge. To install all the dependencies, you run forge install. Okay, so once that's finished running, you can run forge test to compile and run the tests. Essentially, what we have to do is write our exploit in this test. And if this test passes, then you have solved the challenge. We'll jump in and have a look at what's in this test.sol file and also the vulnerable contract in a bit. So compiling the files, it may take a while if this is your first time running because it has to download the sulk version as well. So there we go, the test has ran and it has failed, which is normal because we haven't solved the challenge yet. So let's jump in and have a look at what we need to do here. So Reaper Farm got hacked for 1.7 million and the goal of this challenge is to steal 400k die from this vulnerable vault contract. Essentially, it's the same exploit across various vaults. So we can just do the exploit in this die contract in this challenge to solve the CTF and we have to drain 400k from it. So looking at this vault contract, we can see it here on FTM scan. It's got nothing in it because obviously the money has already been drained from this contract. And we'll jump into our uh, vulnerable code here and have a look at the tests and also the vulnerable vault contract itself. So open it up in your favorite code editor and open up this test folder, which in there you'll find the reaper hack.t.sol, which will be where we will be writing our exploit. So in the test contract, all we're doing is setting up the vulnerable reaper contract here and also the phantom die contract. And here we're creating our local test environment, selecting the fork using block 4400000. And then we have our exploit, which we can write in here. And finally here, it does an assert to check if you have actually stolen at least 400,000 die from this vulnerable vault contract. So to find the vulnerability, I'm going to source and the vulnerable contract in question is Reaper Vault v 2sol so I'll actually go through this contract and treat it sort of like an audit I would do on Code Arena because a lot of you have asked me to 
uh, share my methodology when I'm doing audits and my methodology isn't really that sophisticated. Pretty much I just open up the code and read through it and things will jump out at me because I have seen them in previous audit reports and then I'll look further into the various issues around the lines that look a bit dodgy and see if I can spot something interesting. So to exploit this contract, essentially we're trying to drain funds from it, right? So what we are looking for is any place where the contract will be transferring funds. Uh, anytime you are transferring funds into the contract, anytime the contract transfers funds to you, they are all opportunities where funds can be stolen. So that is what we will be looking for as we go through this code. So Reaper Vault 2 is an ERC4626, which is a vault standard, an ERC20 token. It's got re-entrancy guard, so potentially re-entrancy won't be the exploit scenario here. And it's also got access control enumerable, so it can define different roles for access to various function calls in this contract. So going down, up here we've got struts and the variables which are not very interesting so we will scroll past them then we've got events and down here we've got the constructor we don't really see any transfers happening in the constructor but i do see the asset is not checked for the zero address so if this is a code arena contest you can ping them for that and going down, we've got total assets, which is a public view function. Usually view and pure functions isn't really that interesting in an order because they're not making any changes to storage variables. So not much can go wrong with these functions. So I usually just uh, scroll past them fairly quickly unless those functions are called by other functions. Uh, for example, this uh, convert to shares. This is a view function, but it will be called by another function to calculate how many shares the user will receive. So these functions I will look at a bit more closely. So um, scrolling down, we've got a couple of more view functions, which we will go past for now. Preview deposit, which is a view function. And then we come to the deposit function, which is the first time when value is transferred. So this is when you deposit the amount of assets. So the user will specify the assets, the amount of assets that they want to deposit into this vault. And then this the deposit function will calculate how many shares that they should receive based on how many assets they transferred in uh, to uh, this uh, contract. Now this does call the preview deposit function, which then calls the convert to shares function. Now I will mention here that this is uh, ERC4626. So actually this issue has uh, come up in previous water contests before where for ERC4626 contracts, there is a specific spec that you have to follow to strictly be an ERC4626. And this has actually come up in previous order contests and it was marked as a high severity finding. So if you do find this issue in a future order contest, it could be worth a couple of thousand bucks. So for ERC4626, if it's calculating the amount of shares that the user should receive, it should be a rounded down. And if you're calculating how much tokens a user has to provide to uh, receive any funds, it should round up. So essentially it's going to round in favor of the contract. So the user will always have to provide more or receive less which is strictly the ERC4626 standard. And if a code base does not follow that principle, then you can essentially ping them for that uh, during an audit. So other than that rounding thing, there isn't really anything else with this deposit function that appears to be an issue. It uh, transfers the funds from message or sender and then immense the amount of shares uh, to the user. So that seems okay. And then we've got the mint function down here, which the user can specify 
the amount of shares that they want to mint and then it will transfer the funds from the user based on what it calculates uh, with this preview mint function. So this looks okay as well. And next we have the withdraw function. This is probably where our vulnerability lies because we are withdrawing funds from this contract and the CTF wants us to steal funds. So I would look into these functions in a bit more detail. Now you can pause the video here to see if you can spot the vulnerability yourself in this withdraw function. It's pretty easy to spot if you kind of just follow the logic of it. And it makes me think that this um, project definitely did not do an audit before launching. So definitely recommended for any serious projects to do an audit before launch to avoid any hacks such as this. So. The vulnerability itself is in this withdrawal contract because it doesn't check that the caller is actually the person that uh, they are trying to withdraw from essentially. Now every time you see addresses passed into a function calls, that always gives me something to look at because you can follow the logic and see what this function does with these addresses that are passed in. Uh, potential issues, it could be um, unsafe external calls, it could be a lack of validation on these addresses, uh, for example, uh, zero address checks and um, other whitelisting sort of issues. A lot of issues um, come from passing addresses into functions. So I always take a good look when I see address as a function parameter, uh, just to follow the logic of how that is validated within a function. So here we have an owner address uh, being passed into this withdraw function. So someone calling this function, which is an external function. So anyone can call this function and pass in the owner address, which they will attempt to withdraw funds from that address. And you can see in this function, it validates that the assets you withdraw is greater than zero. It previews the withdraw to calculate the amount of shares that should be burned from the owner. And then it will call the withdraw function. And in this internal withdraw function, it burns the number of shares from the owner. And you can see none of the code here actually checks that the message.sender, which is the person calling this function, is actually the owner. So you can essentially call this and specify someone else's account and withdraw the funds from someone else's account, essentially. Uh, because you can see down here, it will do a safe transfer to the receiver, which is the address that you specified up here um, in this withdraw function. So pretty clear cut issue here, access someone else's account, steal their money, 100% this will be caught in an audit if they ever did one. So now that we have found the vulnerability, which is we can withdraw from any user who have money in this uh, particular vault, we can code that up in uh, reaperhack.t. So we can code up our exploit here. The first step we want to do is find out which accounts have money in it. And after we have our list of addresses, we will call with draw on those addresses to steal their funds. And we have to steal more than 400K. Now, I'm not sure what is the best way to actually get a list of addresses. So I just came to FTM scan and went into this uh, token tracker here and uh, just uh, reviewed the transactions that is under this contract and then just grab the accounts that seem to have a lot of die in it. Now, probably not the most efficient way of doing it manually copying addresses from FTM scan like a pleb. But I'm sure there is a way to do this with the cast a call like they uh, showed in this example here. So if you have a better method of doing this, uh, please let me know. Uh, leave it in the comments down below and show me a better way. But I did it essentially just by going into 
the list of transactions here. Uh, going to the last transaction and just had a look at uh, these accounts that have received a die and I'm looking at accounts that have received a large amount of die, right? So I don't see any here. Looking on page three, uh, we can see uh, this one has a 270K in it. Uh, this one has a 50K. So I'll go ahead and just pick out a bunch of these addresses that seem to have a lot of funds in it. And then we'll check if they still have those funds in our current fork of uh, the blockchain. So just to be safe, I'll grab some on page two as well. Hopefully we have enough accounts here that will get us to that 400k mark. So I think that is enough. So we'll go ahead and copy these addresses. Uh, by the way, you can't copy it straight off here because um, these are all lowercase and it doesn't work. Uh, so you have to click onto these addresses and then it will actually be in the correct format uh, where you can copy it into your exploit code. So go ahead and copy the address and we will put it into our exploit code. Uh, let's just make a list of addresses here. So here we have a bunch of addresses. Again, please let me know if you have a better way of doing this and leave it in the comments down below. So we can now do console.log and just uh, check the balance of these addresses uh, in our current fork. So we can go balance of account one, And it'll be reaper dot balance of the address. So now we can view the balance of each of these five addresses by running that test again. So forge test and we'll do VV to see the output of our console.log. Now we can see that some of these accounts definitely do have balance in them, but it is in 18 decimal places, so it's not really readable. Uh, let's just divide that by 18 and then we'll run our test again. So there we go, account one has 271K, this one has 53, 46 and 87. So. I think if we do this one, uh, this one, and this one, that will add up to be over 400k. Um, so that is account one, account two, and account five. So we'll get rid of uh, three and four. And now we just call the withdraw function as we saw in our vulnerable vault contract. So it's reaper dot withdraw. We have to uh, specify the amount that we want to withdraw, which is just the balance of this address. We need to specify the receiver, which is just our exploit contract. So it's address this. And also we need to specify the owner address, which will just be the address of the account, which we will put here. And then we can repeat that for our three accounts. Cool, so that's all done. Hopefully if we done that all correctly, we would have stolen more than 400k die and that will pass the test um, which is checked on this assert statement here. Uh, phantom die balance of address this is greater than 400k. So let's rerun the test and see if we have solved the challenge. And sweet, there we go. Test result okay. Your final balance is 400k dot 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 of uh, die. So there it is. That is the CTF completed. I am really looking forward to uh, more CTF challenges. 
um, from Unhacked, which is a weekly CTF, which uh, just came out with this uh, first challenge uh, two days ago. So look forward to more challenges uh, from Unhacked CTF if you want to uh, join the mailing list for new weekly solutions uh, subscribe to this unhacked newsletter and i'm definitely looking forward to more challenges from unhacked a great opportunity to uh, practice uh, real world exploits and i think it kind of uh, burns the knowledge into your brain a bit more because it's more practical you know this has actually happened in the past uh, this was on august so pretty recent hack 1.7 million for such a simple bug that can easily be spotted in an audit really goes to show that security in the space um, has a lot um, of ways to go still so hope you enjoyed that video i will catch you in the next one